In the second part of the series, I want to talk about some basic ice climb punishes. If you have not yet seen part 1, go watch that first as it covers basic desyncs and how desyncs work, which is at the core of the ice climbers punish game. I will however not cover wobbling here, as I personally don't think that Icy's main should learn wobbling early on. I personally think that if you learn wobbling too early, while you'll get results faster, you'll stagnate at some point, and in the long run it's better to learn wobbling once you have a good fundamental understanding of the Icy's neutral. I'm not alone in this way of thinking, and I think wobbles explains it really well in a blog post that I will link in the description of this video. Anyways, on to the video. First, let's talk about how to get the most percent out of each hard-earned grab. You can usually connect a grab to pummel to non blizzard, then to a throw. Alternatively, to get even more, you can do a grab to pummel, then F tilt with Nana, pummel again, blizzard, then go for down throw and follow up with one of the throw follow ups I'll go over shortly. Now, let's talk about how to confirm grabs at mid to high percent into kills with the most bread and butter grab combo the Ice Climbers have grab to down throw F smash. To perform it, simply grab the opponent with Popo, then what happens next depends a little on the opponent's character weight. If they're playing a relatively heavy character, for example Samus or Falcon, input the down throw immediately to make sure the opponent is unable to mash out. During the down throw, you input Nana's F smash using either the C stick or analog stick plus A. For lighter characters like Puff or Fox, you want to wait a little bit after getting the grab to let Nana's grab animation end. Once it ends, input down throw with the analog stick, then F smash immediately. This is slightly harder the lighter the character is. Another option for this punish is to charge a smash attack, then down throw and release the smash during the throw. To do this, grab as normal, pummel with A immediately after grabbing, and input the charge smash attack using the analog stick and A during Popo's pummel. He will be busy pummeling, so he won't throw from the analog stick. After letting it charge a little bit, down throw and release A. How long you charge is up to you, but keep in mind that the opponent is able to mash during this time, so if you charge too long, they might be able to mash out. I would recommend using this technique mostly with F smash, as it has a nice and large hitbox. To expand upon the charge smash to down throw, you can mix up their DI on the smash. To do this, set up the charge smash stack the same way, but instead of down throwing, up throw and immediately release the smash. If done correctly, you'll hit the opponent the reverse hit of F smash, and they'll fly off to into the blast zone behind you, as they probably won't DI correctly the first couple of times you use it in a match. Keep in mind that due to some weird Z axis shenanigans, Nana's F smash might sometimes randomly miss when using this technique. The last option I want to talk about for charged smash attacks is up smash. Mostly useful against floaties like Peach and Puff who die off the top more easily. You perform it the same way as the reverse F smash but with up smash instead. Popo can also down throw chain grab several characters even if Nana is dead or far away. This will of course work if Nana is next to you as well. The full list of characters that can be chain grabbed and the percentages it works at are going to be on screen right now as well as being in the spreadsheet in the description. Here comes a matchup specific setup that'll work best against spaces, but you might get them to work against other characters as well. It's called the down throw up smash regrab. The name really says it all with this technique. You just do a down throw with Popo, then up smash with Nana. This will send the opponent slightly up from the floor and they'll be forced into a taking situation. At very low percents, it's really hard for the space animal to react to your up smash and take it properly, so they'll often miss the take and you can do a jab reset into grab and wobble them. I also want to mention the famous down throw down air you grab. It works well with space is a falcon, but it can work on other characters as well. Experiment in friendlies or in training mode to see what matchups it works in and what matchups it doesn't. To perform it, grab the opponent, down throw with Popo, then jump forwards with Nana and immediately dare. The opponent will be put out of hitstun and lose their momentum and you can grab them off of it. Keep in mind that some characters, particularly Falcon and Ganon, will end up behind Popo so you'll have to do a turnaround grab. You can then rinse and repeat this combo over and over again until the opponent SDIs out. Do keep in mind that it won't work at all against floaties like Puff or Peach as they can just DI up and float, jump or use aerial drift to get away. This kid Boogie has a good video on this which will be linked in the description. A variation of this can be done with fair instead of down air which will work on more floatier characters. There isn't much to explain here, just do the same as with down air but use fair instead and try to get the meteor hitbox. You might want to vary whether you use full jump or short hop based on percent, play around with it in practice mode to get familiar with it. It often puts them in a tech situation instead of just giving you a straight up re-grab at higher percents. Lastly, I want to talk a little about handoffs. Handoffs are when you throw the opponent with one climber, then immediately grab them with the other, essentially handing the opponent from one climber to the other, hence the name. Handoffs can be performed with either down throw or F throw, or in certain matchups with back throw, but that's pretty unreliable. 
Down throw handoffs are weight dependent, and the lighter the opponent is, the faster the throw will be. You want to time the grab so that you grab right after the green flash of down throw happens. Forward throw handoffs are a little different. They are not weight dependent, so the timing is the same for every character, but there is a trade off. With forward throw, you need to move the climber that receives the opponent slightly forward for the handoff to connect. This means that if you are right by the edge of the stage or platform, you cannot do forward throw handoffs. Try to time the re-grab so the grab is active right after the hammer hits the opponent. After you've successfully handoffed the opponent over to Nana, you need to know how she will act. First she will randomly pummel an unknown amount of times, then she will choose a throw to use. If she's on a platform or close to the edge, she will throw the opponent towards that ledge. On a platform, she'll usually throw the opponent towards the closest edge of the platform, but there are a few rare exceptions where she doesn't. When in this range, she will only use back throw or forward throw, whichever throws the opponent towards the edge. The observant among you might have noticed that in some situations here, she'll always forward throw, which means you can re-grab with Popo. This will only work for a little while, however, as you need to keep moving forwards with Popo to re-grab F-throw. If you can get a grab as far away from the edge as possible while still in the zone, you can usually get around 3 or 4 handoffs before running out of stage. That means 3 times you get to handoff to Nana and back. With blizzards, tilt and pummels between handoffs, you can usually get about 50 or 60 or even more percent off of this and then end it with a charged F smash leading to a good edge guard opportunity. If Nana is in the middle of the stage, she will pick any random throw, which means there's a 50% chance that she throws in a way that lets you re-grab. With all this knowledge, it is possible to string together some incredibly looking kill combos from even low percent, like this one. Of course, if you really want to just wobble, you can go look up another video on it or wait for a future video I will make showing off different setups, but I highly recommend you get familiar with the punish game as most of the things I outlined in this video are setups that can confirm into wobbles at low percents where getting a straight up wobble might be difficult or sometimes even impossible. That's it for today guys, hope you enjoyed. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, check out my Twitch, it's in the description. Also all the links I talked about are gonna be there, so yeah, check it out.